diplomacy and international business, where the French President Emmanuel Macron is in Kenya. It's the latest stop on his East African tour. He'll be focusing on investment and security in the increasingly strategic region. The French leader will also be attending the UN Environment Assembly in the Kenyan capital in Nairobi later on. He'll co-chair the One Planet Summit with Kenya's President Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. Now, Mr. Macron's office says Kenya is the only African nation to reach the goal of making renewable energy 75 percent of its energy mix. The French president and his Kenyan counterparts are also expected to discuss the ongoing extremist threat in the region, as well as a range of transport and economic projects. Mr. President, your visit signals our shared commitment to foster our bilateral relations and engagements within the region in various ways which will deepen, expand and strengthen our bonds of friendship and cooperation for the mutual benefit of our peoples. We are deeply committed in working together with Kenya on different topics. First, security, counter-terrorism, and uh, obviously the regional agenda. We discussed at length about uh, the situation in the region. We work very well together on the situation, but we want to improve the cooperation. All right, so let's dig deep into the details of what exactly this visit portends. Ali Kansatu, CEO of Rich Management, is with me in studio tonight. Thank you. Evening. All right, so this is the first visit by a sitting head, French head of state to Kenya ever. Why now? What's happening? It's very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, I, so, I mean, two Anglophone countries, Ethiopia and ourselves, as it were, um, first time visit. I think uh, President Macron is speaking to a number of different uh, things here. Firstly, don't want to be boxed into Francophone Africa. They're prepared to look outside that. If you look at the numbers, um, they're probably the sixth biggest invest in the Kenyan economy. Lots of investments which people might not think about. When you consolidate them, they're, they're pretty serious. Peugeot, as we saw earlier today, Danone invested in the president's milk company. Um, uh, you've, you've got a ton of that happening. A lot of financing of renewable energy for Kenjin via AFD. So they've got a presence. It's not as if they're coming out of left field entirely. And I think more than that, there's a greater interest, geopolitically speaking and geoeconomically, around the Indian Ocean. And I think um, uh, Macron is making a play and trying to position France to play a part on this western we, part of the Indian Ocean. They do have access to the sea, though, through Djibouti. Through, through Djibouti. So this would be a sort of hedge, a secondary hedge, a hedge if you will. And then obviously they've got the presence in some of these Indian Ocean islands, yeah. which are very attractive to people because of the enormous economic exclusion zone. So they've Quite. got presences, but I think they're trying to build up on that. Right. But if looking, I mean, if you step back and look at the trade and the investment players, as you pointed out, yes, mm. they've been here, but not necessarily in, in, in a steady, growing, incremental fashion. Persia, for example, when I was a kid, yes, was My huge. dad, 504, Rama. Exactly. That's an My icon. Uh, oh, that's, that's the car I remember. Right. Exactly. But Peugeot was huge, and then they're Toyota back, came in. They're back. Don't knock them. But, but that's the thing. Yes. With Peugeot particularly, they're coming in, they're setting up a, uh, an assembly plant, or production plant, an yes. assembly plant here in the country. But looking at our tax setup at the moment, buying a car is incredibly expensive. No, no, no. There's a quid pro quo. There's no way these boys would be making these kinds of investments had they not been told that mm. there's going to be some kind of more penal tax on second-hand cars. Probably a banning of, uh, a, a, a tightening up of the age limit on cars. Which we're seeing coming in in July. Which is going to make these cars simply a no-brainer. Right, but at the end of the day, that, how's that going to play out politically? Because essentially the government is saying, I'm going to give you access to assembled cars, yeah. but I'm going to limit your freedom of choice. If you want to go and get something from outside, you're going to have to stamp up a lot more for it. Yes, I think you know the government wants to encourage industrialization. This is a, a, an easy win. You're seeing a lot of these car makers spread out across sub-Saharan Africa. So I think for them, for the government, you know, President Kenyatta, I saw in a tweet, was calling it uh, a Kenyan vehicle. Mm -hmm. So you can see what's going on here. But I think essentially that thing was a done deal a couple of years ago. Just took a bit of time to go through the system. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think it's if you, you, trade is not is not an exciting number, France, Kenya. What, what's interesting to That's me about is about two hundred thirty odd million dollars. 
but what is interesting is these very big companies which have been here for years and years cement sector mm -hmm. is Lafarge for yeah. example Total uh, upstream and downstream mm -hmm. and now big play in oil and gas in East Africa mm -hmm. so I wouldn't underestimate them and you know they work but they're a very sharp operator politically geopolitically and at an international I'm, I'm level glad, I'm glad you brought up Total because 2016 was a nasty year for them in Kenya because initially the idea was we're going to build a pipeline to take oil from mm. Uganda into the Mombasa port and then that plan mm. got dropped off entirely and now they're like okay well we're actually going to come back we're going to build mm. one from Lokicha down to the port of mm. Lamu not even Mombasa down to Lamu um, is this essentially part of that broader rapprochement I think it is part of it I think you know we lost out on that pipeline and the pipeline war with Magafuli and if we're going to give credit to Magafuli about anything we're going to give it to him uh, for his success at winning these big infrastructure projects which we should have which should have been our bread and butter but yes I think you know there's a lot of quid pro quo with the French right you know you come and invest and we'll give you this we'll give you that that's how they tend to work and I think you know probably the importance of that pipeline is so important to Kenya and President Kenyatta it would be a big win for him I don't think it's a given though I think you know the economics not stacking up for me um, uh, you know the oil up north isn't of the magnitude which would justify I think yeah, it's about seven seven hundred fifty odd million barrels that we do have yeah. right one last question for you because it does seem there's there's an infrastructure play there's a defense play as well correct uh, especially with Ethiopia there was a loan of about 96 million Navy dollars. Navy mind correct that's why I'm talking to a, about the ocean to, to a Navy and Ethiopia at this point doesn't it's a landlocked country no, he's so made what's friends with everybody he can park his Navy wherever he but that's wants not, but that's not land you control no but I think essentially because you're such a big and powerful country it would be you know you would be able to exert control um, over your over your Navy it's just not parked on your border it's on somebody else's and I think Ethiopia under Abbey is going to play a much bigger role in security, particularly around this part of Africa. And I think uh, that's a win win for both of them. Mm. Right, we'll leave it there for the time being. Alec and Sachu, thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure to see you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Right then. So, of course, we'll certainly keep a very close eye on the developments uh, as Monsieur Macron continues his uh, visit here in Kenya for a while. Long